Hey guys, before I get into today's video, I just want to say thank you to everybody who voted for me in the uh, DeBoss Garage car show. Uh, I made the top 25 in three categories, which I'm just super stoked about. Brent from uh, PFI Speed uh, appeared to really dig the car, even though I didn't win. He had some really nice things to say. So thank you, Brent. Uh, you got a new subscriber. And uh, yeah, speaking of subscribers, like, comment, subscribe. I just cracked 500 the other day. Um, I'm going to try and just bring as much content as I can for you guys. So thank you for everybody that's supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now, drop a comment below. And yeah, you can follow me on Facebook at Bernice Garage, Instagram Bernice Garage, all of that type of thing. So yeah, enjoy the video. What's up guys, welcome back to Bernice Garage. Something a little bit different today. Had a lot of people ask me about the car and want to know more about the build and how I put the turbo on the motor and stuff. So I thought I'd do a bit of like a build overview video, even though the car's not finished and the plans for the future of the car. And I figured rather than getting into the juicy stuff first, we'd start at the back and work our way forward. So let's start at the back. Got these little press studs that hold the boot lid on. And then the whole boot lid just unclips. So the whole boot lid is gutted. So all the framework's been cut out. I haven't even finished it yet. It's still just freshly being cut out. Yeah, so usually bolted up in here, there's a huge like hinge assembly on both sides with springs and everything. So that's all gone. <clears throat> if you've watched my DeBoss Garage video, then you know I was trying to get as much weight out of the car as possible. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty self-explanatory remove and unbolt as much stuff as you can. So in here I've got a fuel cell. I don't exactly know what size it is. I think it might be a 50 litre or something like that. It's mounted, I've mounted it on like a fair angle because I was hoping that I could get away with running no surge tank. So I had the twin pump set up and this car's running a dead head system. So the reg and everything is all located in the boot and then it's just got one pressure line up to the engine and no return. Um, but yeah, just driving in and out of the driveway on the brakes and stuff, I could hear the pumps aerating, so I had to rethink it and put a surge tank in. So I've got a two litre surge tank here. That just returns back into the top. So at the moment, I'm just using one of my EFI pumps just to feed the surge tank. So yeah, this one on the right feeds the surge tank. And then this one feeds the engine, comes out of the reg, back into the surge tank, back in. So it's all isolated in the boot with just one high pressure line into the engine bay, so I do like that system. I've got the battery box. The isolator is actually located in the, originally this is the aerial hole, so the, that's where the electric aerial is in the boot. And um, yeah, I just thought it'd be funny to put the battery isolator there, so it works. I don't know if Andrew or, if that, or any of that will allow it, but... <laughs> If I have to move it, I have to move it. If not, it's a cool, quirky little thing. So, got the three inch lobster tip muffler on the back. The car is actually registered with the Stuff's 929 number plate. So this was actually my, this was actually a road car when it used to be black. Um, it was a daily drive, like my daily driver, just a normal street car with an interior and everything. It still had the mega squirt and everything in it. I think I've actually got a video of it running when it was NA. Back window leaks, the boot leaks, the sunroof leaks, the dash was leaking. Ironically now, it's probably all gonna get fixed anyway because I wanna eventually make it into a proper nice thing, but sometimes that's just how the ball rolls. Yeah, moving into the cabin. So I've got the roof mounted switch panel here. I got plans to put a touch screen in here and uh, use a Raspberry Pi and hook it all up to the mega squirt and everything so I can have like air fuel ratio and stuff on the touch screen the matching silver face auto meter wideband gauge is like 400 bucks i've already got to innovate ic2 in here so i can't really see the point in in buying another wideband when i can you know touch raspberry pi touch screen off ebay it was like 70 dollars so just i can't see the point of giving me a little bit more options i'll be able to see like ignition timing and um stuff like that so got the hydraulic handbrake here and uh, this ball valve so this actually shuts off the rear brakes 
So if I close it, I've got no rear brakes. It's basically just for doing burnouts. So I can just put my foot flat on the brake and only have front brakes. And uh, yeah, I got the B&M shifter. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Mega Squirt 3 here. So all the wiring's up under there. I think I do have a quick shot of the car when the dash wasn't in it from before. There's like a relay panel up behind the dash. Pretty much all of the factory wiring from the car has been removed. But this section in the dash and the engine bay is pretty much all that remains. So all of the indicators and everything and all the headlights and that are still actually hooked up. So, you know, if I, I do decide to take this thing for a, a lap of the street and get some rego on it, I can. And um, yeah, also if I want to do roll racing, you technically have to have like a registered car with a full exhaust and everything to do roll racing. So I was sort of just keeping that in mind rather than just guarding everything and then having no indicators and no brake lights and stuff. So this is the panel here where the sunroof used to be. These have got a big, heavy, ugly electric sunroof that usually takes up the whole roof. So that was a fair bit of weight there. And if you look at the back doors, they're all gutted. So these aluminium straps here just hold the window up. And there's one bolt at the back there that holds the door shut. So you can actually undo that bolt and open the back doors if you need to. So hopefully in the near future is going to get a full roll cage, probably just do a 4130 welded cage just sort of future proof the car a bit so it's ready if it's ever got big power in it and runs less than tens at the quarter mile have the proper cage and safety equipment and everything to be okay so big plans underneath my bonnet's all gutted so it's a bit flimsy but i've got some plans for the bonnet you'll see that in the future there's no gas struts that's why there's a big yellow stick here holding the bonnet up this car's got uh fc rx7 coil legs in it, which aren't really a direct bolt in for a 99. So there's two ways you can go about it. The way I decided to go was chop the strut tower out and weld in a new strut top with the uh, correct, you know, holes to mount that coil lever. So the car has got uh, our Holden Astra electric power steering pump, which might be on its way out actually, because I just bought it second hand and it's pretty loud, but they're pretty easy to come by, so if something goes wrong with it, I'll just get another one and chuck it in there. This braided line down to the rack is a... Uh, if you want to do that conversion yourself at home, you can pretty much get all the fittings you need to make that braided line yourself. So I've done plenty of fuel lines and water lines and stuff in the past, and that um, 100 series or 200 series braided Teflon hose or whatever, that's fine for making a power steering line. So. That just goes down to the rack and you just need to know what correct, what thread or what style of fitting, you know, to go into your rack and dash sticks or whatever it is. So anyone who's ever had a Commodore will recognize them straight away. What I didn't realize though when I went this way was the Mega Squirt can't actually run the direct coils directly from the board. So I then had to go out and find a ignition module. So I've got this little three channel Bosch ignition, ignition module here, which drives the coils. And actually think that's out of like a Volvo or something. The turbo is an eBay GT35 with a 106 exhaust housing. It's going to be interesting to see how the 106 goes because I think it's it's pretty laggy. I would like it to come on boost a bit sooner. Until I drive the car a bit more, I don't really know how it's going to go. But what this has basically got is it's got its standard naturally aspirated exhaust manifolds on it. So the factory manifold goes around the back of the engine and connects up to the manifold on this side and then that goes down and out so what I've basically done and I think I can actually dig up some old footage is there's a pipe that I've made out of two inch steam pipe goes off the bottom of the manifold around, loops around does a 180 and comes back up under here all right my J pipe's looking pretty good although it does look a little bit more like a M so I think I'm going to refer to it as a M pipe or a a starch pipe or something. So it comes up to the turbo, turbo sits on it, and then it sort of goes off into a Y piece out to the 50 mil external wastegate, which is here. And you can sort of see the, the screamer pipe just dumps out underneath. You can sort of see that in my intro video when I drove over. You can see the screen pipe, screen pipe sticking down. And it's got a three inch dump the whole way back, three inch source all the way out with just that one muffler on the back. So 
Uh, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do that again. Because it'd probably, it'd probably be just the same amount of work just to make manifolds. By the time you add up all the time put into that, of course, when I 180 that pipe off the bottom of the manifold, I had nowhere for my exhaust to go. So I had to box, cut the floor out and box the floor to run a dump pipe through. So, you know, it it's, would be, wouldn't be any good for a street application. You know, the exhaust is going through the firewall where the heater and the air conditioning and the ECU and all of that stuff used to be in a factory car. So if you had a factory street car version of this car, you'd just probably be better off just making manifolds from scratch. So, but live and learn, eh? 600 by 300 front mount. Again, just the eBay unit and a two and a half inch intercooler pipe from the turbo down to the intercooler on the hot side. And then three inch pipe, aluminium, just a universal intercooler kit on the cold side. And these have got like a weird like twin throttle body on them. So there's actually two butterflies in there. And uh, yeah, I figured instead of running like a silicon and trying to get the oval clamp, the silicon to clamp onto this oval shaped throttle body, I just welded it. Just fabbed all this up out of aluminium and just welded this pipe on. I figured that can't blow off. <laughs> so now you got the Turbo Smart blow off out there. There is 550cc RX7 injectors, but I'm running about 50 psi fuel pressure at the moment, so I think they fly a bit more. I think they flow 600 plus at the higher fuel pressure. It's got the uh, electronic boost control. This car originally has a distributor. So this is usually a distributor and the plug leads go off of that. So this has just been turned into like a cam sensor. And then down there on the front of the balancer, there's like a 36 minus one crank trigger wheel. So this has originally got like a 24 tooth wheel inside it, like an RX-7 cast does. And I just could not get the mega squirt to read it. Just, just having heaps of problems with it breaking down and sink loss errors and all that kind of thing. When I switched over to the 36 minus one crank trigger setup, which that wheel and sensors actually offer 2003 Master 6, uh, all of my problems went away and it just fixed everything. So, you got focus there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a like an EFEL Falcon alternator. In high output internal reg alternator. Underneath that, there's usually the mechanical hydraulic steering pump for the power steering. That's all been removed and the brackets all been chopped up and everything. So that's just gone. And for the moment, the car's got the stock trans in it, but that's gonna have to go. So the new trans is sort of over there in pieces. So that's coming up on a video too. So if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, like and subscribe now and comment. Let me know what you want to see. If you have any questions, uh, thanks to everybody who voted in the DeVos Garage Car Show. I really appreciate it. I made it into the top 25 in three categories and uh, yeah, stick around for the next video. Thanks for watching.